Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Emily, how did you write Wuthering Heights? <laughs> Shall we begin? Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. I was really excited. It felt like a full circle moment for me because I, I studied in Leeds in the north of England and going back to play this particular uh, literary character was really special because we went back, back up to Yorkshire so it felt like a really lovely alignment of things but yeah she Emily Bronte is, a, is quite a quite a character to to play so I'm really glad <laughs> I got the chance to again yeah it's very special yeah yeah it's pretty wonderful so I think so yeah I don't I, I wanted to do something that didn't feel kind of like encased in a glass case I wanted to do something that was really speaking to young people young women and try and say something with the Brontes, um, with em Emily, that was really speaking to people today. She was, yeah, she was very, she was very fierce and strong. Uh, had a big kind of creative power to her, which was probably a lot for other people, <laughs> I think. But um, yeah, and that's kind of what I really wanted to say with the film. I think that um, you know, to hang on to your power as a woman even if that's kind of not accepted in the world. Yeah, it's really important. I studied them a little bit um, when I was doing my English studies and like, you know, I learned mostly about Charlotte Bronte, doing like Jane Eyre and all that kind of stuff. So I had a little bit of knowledge, but it was lovely to kind of do a deep dive on my own like accord and kind of look into things that I'm choosing to and learning more about Anne and Emily and all that as well. So it's been really lovely and, you know, just seeing the deeper you go, like how, you know, like great their literature is and like I read some of the books and we also went to the parsonage which was lovely and like they had a whole exhibition just for Anne when we were there and I was like perfect. I actually um, had studied Jane Eyre which is Charlotte Bronte's uh, most famous novel um, when I was at school and I also played Jane Eyre in a school play so I kind of knew Charlotte Bronte whose character that I play like before, quite well before I felt like had a quite a good handle, well not really of her but more of, but she, a lot of her comes through in that book. Um, so yeah, but Emily was, I didn't know so much about and I didn't, I, yeah, so, and Anne, I hadn't read any of hers either. So there was a still, there's so much, I mean, they, I mean, yes, there's still so much to uncover still. Do you know what, it's really interesting. I actually didn't, I went to a French school, so we didn't study sort of the Brontos, but I think it's so interesting the, 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 the kind of the cling that they still have in sort of literature, specifically Emily Bronte, who wrote one book and it's still revered as one of the greatest pieces of literature. So I think it's, uh, it's incredibly telling and actually going to revisit the book again for this, it's such a powerful piece. Um, but yeah, it's, but it was quite nice going in. I knew very little. I sort of knew the, the gist of a couple of things about the Brontes, but they are a fascinating family. And, and she in particular, Emily, it was a fascinating, um, yeah, fascinating person. I do still read a lot of books. I feel like I read scripts more than books currently, which is fine, which is great. We, we love that. But I, I, yeah, I miss, I miss the, I miss the academia of reading, having to read a book to write an essay. Like it sounds really stupid, but it, I liked that for my brain. So, yeah. But I, I miss reading books consistently. Yes. I should. Thank you. I will. I deleted Instagram to fall that. So that's that's the idea. I'm going to fill my brain with more book knowledge now. Yes. 
I am. I feel like I'm reading less now that streaming's gone. Like, you know, I just feel like I'm reading less. But I, I read a lot of um, nonfiction actually at the moment. I don't know why, but I'm just reading a lot of nonfiction. But yeah, I do read. I do read a lot. Yes, I did. Yeah, not at university, but like um, for sick form. <laughs> Quite nervous. It's, it's a lot, but you know, like it's it's great and it's such an amazing opportunity. So I'm just like grateful to kind of be a part of it and to be involved in the film. <laughs> a reader? Yes. I mean, yeah, I just studied English literature at A-level, so I like to think I am, although I sort of, when I started reading loads of scripts, I kind of, my novels kind of went down and I started reading more non-fiction, but... Oh, it's great. I feel like um, Frances and I worked together uh, like 10 years ago, and she said at the time, you know, I'm thinking about writing this Emily Bronte thing. And, um, and so here we are 10 years later, which is crazy. Um, but it's, I think as an actor, it's nice to, to explore different things. And I did a, yeah, I, did, I sort of, I did a horror series and then a sort of thriller horror film. And, and then you sort of like, it's quite nice to just sort of go through and explore different genres. And, but I feel very, very proud of this movie. This this film exactly. It's very much, I feel like, relevant to young girls, especially now. And and it's she's she's kind of like, yeah. I think the way we tell Francis has sort of envisioned it and tells the story, but it still feels very of the period, but at the same time really modern. And so she's managed to capture the two so well together. And I think that's a really hard thing to do. So. It's, it's really cool. Oh, well, I mean, the costumes are great. Um, Michael, who's our costume designer, is a wonderful, wonderful character, and he, everything is thought in the most precise detail. He's a history nerd, and so everything had to be very precise and perfected, and, and all the materials. I mean, we, Emily Bronte had a, in real life, had a, a lightning dress with lightning bolts on it according to the history books. So he made one, again, made one for, for the film. And so it's just little details like that that are really, I, which I love. So yeah, make the film extra special and research, and I like that. Well, this is definitely a lot more comfortable than the corsets. Um, the corsets were great though. Like, you know, it's good to kind of stay authentic to the time period, even if they were very restrictive. <laughs> Could probably get my arms right here in those dresses. Yeah. <laughs> Much more comfortable, actually. Yeah, like I can breathe better in this and also also like I was quite nice it's quite nice to get a bit glammed up for this because it was like definitely in the in the film um, Charlotte's looking a little bit more plain and kind of yeah hard lined so and tired <laughs> for a lot of it so yeah I've got some sports and fun ringlets as well um, so this definitely feels more elegant tonight. Oof, the costume, the, I mean, I feel, I feel quite lucky as a man that I don't have to wear a corset, but it's, it's unbelievable how long it used to take people to get dressed in the morning. Um, yeah, my, the costumes in Emily, because I, I, I play a clergyman, there's an awful lot of buttons. So there was, your love of my life, I love you. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's quite it's it's a it's a it's a complicated it, it was a complicated thing getting dressed this is i literally got this on in 30 seconds today yeah so so we're we're we're, we're much luckier nowadays really fun it's been yeah really exciting day just been going around meeting a lot of the press and talking about the film and it's just a great city to be showing the film at and a great festival so it's been a lot of fun so far but i'm excited to go and watch the rest of the films we're in great company here <laughs> thank you for watching the fan carpet please follow us on facebook twitter and instagram for more content next time who are you you wait and see
I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.